Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Clooney BB in the monogram canvas. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab a tea, let's start your workout, it's gonna work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me, we have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question, I actually had a few people ask similar ones, so I kind of put them together, but Sylvia Diaz and Bo Lewis ask, the news just announced that Karl Lagerfeld passed away. How do you think this will affect the fashion industry? Will his designs be more in demand? Are there certain ones you think will be more in demand than others? I can't help but wonder what and where this fashion house is going now. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Karl Lagerfeld passed away on Tuesday. And uh, I mean, this man was an icon. He was a legend. He was incredibly creative and he will be greatly missed in my opinion. Um, and as far as uh, do I think that some of his designs will be more in demand? I do. I definitely do, especially the ready to wear. And uh, unfortunately, that does seem to be the case. Anytime a designer ends up passing away, a lot of their ready to wear pieces end up becoming uh, highly sought after. Like I also feel that the um, that the classics and the boy bags will also end up having a surge of purchases that come through, or those will also end up having um, gaining a lot more po uh, popularity than ever before. And as far as the future of the fashion house, there is no doubt in my mind, I am confident that it'll still continue to be exactly where it is. It'll still continue to be a top dog amongst the luxury fashion houses because the person who was appointed creative director was his right hand for 30 years, for 30 years. And she knows the ins and outs of the fashion house. She knows uh, how Carl thought. She knows everything about how he wanted to continue with Coco Chanel's legacy. And I'm really excited to see if she does end up introducing other designs that she also um, that she also has in mind you know but as far as the future of it I think that uh, I think that it'll definitely end up staying exactly where it is but I would love to know your guys's thoughts on this what do you think the future of Chanel is going to be do you think it's going to be exactly where it is or do you think something else might end up happening whatever it is let us know in the comment section down below next question from C what are your thoughts on the new giant monogram collection of Louis Vuitton any pieces catching your eye I know how you you feel about pink and red uh, now unfortunately at this point in time when I'm recording this I don't have a picture that I can share with you guys so I can give you a little bit more eye candy but this collection I don't know the exact name of it but it is scheduled to launch at the end of March, if I'm not mistaken, and they're going to have handbags, uh, travel pieces, um, they're going to have bandeaus as well as bag charms, if I'm not mistaken, and small leather goods. And this collection, there are some things that I really like, and there's other pieces that I'm kind of like, I don't know, I don't know. And when they say giant monogram, it's no joke. A regular monogram piece, the L and the V might be like an inch big. And when it comes to the giant, we're talking like three and a half to maybe four inches. That's how big the monogram is. So it can be a little bit loud. I feel that it ends up working a little bit better on the small other goods than on some of the than on some of the handbags. Some of the handbags that are going to be available are the um, the Speedy Bandolier 30, as well as the Neverfull, and I believe there's one other. I just can't remember to save my life. Uh, and they are going to have a little bit of a higher price point. I believe last time I saw that the Neverfull MM um, was going to re retail close to like 1800 bucks, maybe 1850, somewhere around there. So they do have a pretty price tag and the colors are very vibrant. They have reds, greens, purples, um, yellow. They also have a reverse monogram kind of big logo. I don't know, but even though I'm not a fan of really big logos for the most part, to a certain extent, I should say, um, like really, really big ones, I feel like they might be somewhat obnoxious. I think that it might be a little bit busy. There's just something that ends up kind of calling me when it comes to some of the bags. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense. I probably sound like a lunatic, but they also have like a Kirigami set. but there's just something about it. I think that it's really fun. Some people think that it's crazy tacky. Some people think that it's way too over, over the top. Some pieces, like I said, they might be somewhat busy, but there's others that I'm like, hmm, <laughs> oh, that's not bad, that's not bad. <laughs> so like I said, I might sound totally crazy, but um, there are some things in this collection 
that um, that I do uh, not necessarily have my eye on, but that I appreciate more than others. Um, but I think it'll be, I really do think it's going to be a crazy, crazy popular collection because it has that fun twist to it. And especially with spring coming in as well as summer, I think it'll do really, really well. Uh, so I would love to hear your thoughts, but fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Winter Happy 25 Where do you sell bags usually? I'm so scared to sell my bags that I no longer use because I might send it to a fake buyer. Um, I actually had this question quite a bit last week, and it might be a little bit more of a long-winded answer, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit more feedback, and it is not my intention to to scare anybody or anything like that, but I've told you in the past, I will always share my experiences, good or bad, and um, I know exactly what you mean. I was talking to one of my girlfriends last week about the hesitation that she was having on selling her handbag just because of this same thing. I feel like there's so many shady people out there when it comes to buying and selling luxury goods, and I think that it's getting worse instead of getting better, and even though there are things in place to help protect the buyer and the seller alike, I feel that there's more protection for the buyer than there is for the seller and oftentimes they end up getting the short end of the stick you know and um, I myself have experienced it firsthand it is not fun it is such a nightmare and it definitely ends up giving you that um, you know that hesitation of wanting to sell anything and it ends up leaving a bad taste in your mouth you hear about a lot of horror stories where these transactions end up taking place that, you know, if you end up selling a handbag that's authentic, the person buys it, they either say that they didn't get it or they say that it's not authentic, they request a refund, and instead of sending back the bag that you sent them that is authentic, they end up sending you a fake one and the same companies where all these transactions end up taking place, they end up siding with the buyer instead of the seller who are in fact trying to sell that authentic item. You know, so like I said before, I feel like they do end up getting the short end of the stick. Sometimes I do end up selling through Instagram, although it's been, uh, it's been a bit since I've sold anything, uh, but sometimes I've sold on Instagram and other times I do end up using consignment shops. Now I know consignment shops aren't necessarily uh, sometimes people aren't um, aren't too happy with them because they do end up lowballing uh, on some of their quotes. And of course, it's up to the individual whether or not they want to accept that quote. If you like what you see, you can sell it to them. If you don't, then you can go through a different avenue. Uh, but I do like going through consignment shops because I have a lot of other things to worry about. And if I don't have to worry about a fake buyer or having a really bad experience when it comes to selling something, then that's a major, major win for me. You know what I mean? So in a sense, they kind of give me peace of mind. It's a little bit more of a convenience because once you sell to a consignment shop, if you like what you see, like I said, if you end up selling it to them, you send them the bag, they give you the money, and that's it, you are done. You have nothing else to do with that bag. Anything else that happens is out of your hands. So like I said, it's kind of a convenience. And when I do sell to a consignment shop, and if I look at the quote that I get, sometimes I have gotten really bad, um, you know, really low offers, I should say, not bad. I've gotten really low offers. Um, and it's not like, it's not anything to laugh at. It's not like, oh man, I'm, I'm losing $3,000. That's amazing. Not at all. You know, it definitely stings. Um, but I also have to remember that when I sell to them, it's kind of like a pawn shop. They also have to make money off of my sale. So to answer your question, sometimes I have sold through Instagram. Other times I have sold through consignment shops. And once again, I am not trying to scare any, any one of you guys. Um, that is not my intention. I just want to share my experiences just in case you decide to go down the same uh, path. Uh, and one more thing before I make this any longer, if you are selling your handbag and if you do not get a good vibe, if there's just something in your gut saying, don't go through with it, don't go through with it, listen to your gut instinct. I cannot stress that enough. Sometimes I wish I would have listened to my gut instinct instead of necessarily being, um, being blinded by the fact that maybe the offer was too good or it felt too good to be true type of thing, you know? And I'm not saying that there aren't those cases by any means whatsoever, but if you do get that gut feeling, just don't go through with it, hold on to your bag for a little bit longer or go a different route um, because I feel like sometimes your gut instinct is just kind of like yelling at you to say, don't do it, don't do it, this doesn't feel right. So I don't know if this ends up helping you guys uh, but I just wanted to share a little bit more and shed a little bit more light on uh, on the whole resale thing. I feel like I could do a video on it. Uh, but once again, fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to help. Next question from 408 California 408. 
Do you have a magic number when it comes to the amount of handbags you will allow yourself to have, i.e., you will not have more than 25 handbags in your collection? This is my current struggle. I do not want to have too many. It makes me feel anxious. So I am now considering to sell a bag each time I buy a bag so I don't go over the 25 I now have. Of course, I will only sell a bag if I wasn't using it enough or I didn't consider it a forever bag. This will be really tough. Um, all right, so do I have a magic number when it comes to the amount of handbags I'll allow myself to have? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Is that bad? I feel like that's bad. I feel like that's bad, but I don't think so. I mean, I don't see myself having a hundred bags or anything close to it, but I also don't have a set number. Um, I'm just obsessed with bags. I always have been. I always will be, I think. And uh, I won't buy a bag just to buy it. And I will only go for it if I really like it and if I see myself using it or if it ends up working out for my lifestyle. You know what I mean? And I really do try not to get... Um, not to get bags that are a little too, too similar. Uh, case in point, my Speedy, uh, my Speedy 30 Classic in the Mon Mono, I love that bag, but once I got this guy, anytime I want to use a monogram, uh, a monogram Speedy, I end up going for this one over the Mon Mono, you know what I mean? So um, ever since then, moving forward, when it comes to adding a handbag to my collection, I really have to... Um, I really have to kind of weigh everything out just to ensure that there isn't a bag within my collection that already kind of fits that criteria. But at the same time, if I really like something and if there's that if there's that that chance that I might end up using it, then then I'll still end up going for it. But no, there is no set number that I have um, or anything like that. Um, like I said, I don't think I'll have a hundred. Um, how crazy would that be? That would be awesome. That would be so amazing, but I don't, I don't foresee that, um, you know, happening or anything like that, but fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Sarah Covet. I have my eye on two different handbags. I really would like to own a Givenchy Antigona in the size small with a shiny leather. And I would really like to have a speedy bandolier 25 in Damien Ben. Which one would you go for first? I really would like to add both to my collection someday, and it seems like the Antigona is always the same price, whereas Louis Vuitton always has a price increase each year. I have the means to purchase either bag right now, but I don't want to make the wrong decision. What would you do? Which one seems more practical to you? Um, all right, so I know that you said the shiny leather for the Givenchy Antigona small, and you also said the Speedy Bandolier 25 in the Damia Ben, uh, but I wanted to bring both of mine out in those same sizes, just so we have a little bit more um, more eye candy and also for size reference. Mine is in the sugar and of course it's also in the monogram canvas. I do think that both of these bags are wonderful. Personally, I feel that the Speedy Bandolier ends up offering a little bit more versatility than the Givenchy Antigona and it's really because of the strap. Uh, now I know that this one comes with a strap, but I feel that with this one, because it does have that adjustment, you have a little bit more play. So whether you decide to use it strapless, whether you decide to use it crossbody or on your shoulder, I think that you have a little bit, again, more play when it comes to this bag. Whereas with this one, even though it comes with a strap, I personally don't end up using it too often. Um, if I'm in a jam and if I need to be hands-free for a moment, then I'll end up using the strap that it comes with. But for the most part, it ends up just sitting on here, kind of like a decorative piece. So I don't really end up using the strap the way that... Um, that I feel maybe most people might end up using it. I just really like the way that it looks on it. Um, I guess you can consider it kind of like a <laughs> like a bag charm. Uh, but I think that with the strap that it has, it doesn't have as much play. It's not as long. It's not adjustable, and you can't really end up using it crossbody. I do like both sizes. They do end up fitting an incredible, I mean, an incredible amount of items. I just think that this one is a little bit better. Um, you get a little bit more bang for your buck, in my opinion. Uh, now, one other thing that I wanted to throw out there, just in case, whenever it comes to for myself, whenever it comes to adding a hand, two handbags to my collection, if I cannot make up my mind. What I end up doing, it might sound totally old school, but I actually end up sitting down and making a list of the pros and cons. And I have to be brutally honest with myself. That's the only way that these lists will end up uh, will end up working. But I end up kind of going through the pros and the cons, and that way I can kind of see which one I might end up leaning more towards. You know, like if one has maybe 15 pros versus three cons, and another one might have three pros and 10 cons, you know what I mean? Uh, but that's what I like to do, and uh, I have been pretty successful when it comes to going that route. 
route. Like I said before, some people think it's very, very old school, but it definitely works. It's the whole process of elimination, if you will. Um, but um, like I said before, if you sit down and make a list of the pros and cons, I think that's really, really helpful. But overall, I think that both bags are beautiful. I just feel that the Speedy Bandolier ends up offering just a little bit more in my opinion. So hopefully this was able to help, but fantastic question. Next question from Luxury T6. What are your thoughts on the Chanel Maxi flap? Have you ever thought about adding one to your collection? Before we get any further, let me insert a picture of the Chanel Maxi right now. The Maxi is the largest when it comes to the Chanel Classic Flap lineup, and it is a beautiful bag and quite spacious given its size. Um, unfortunately, I haven't really thought about adding it to my collection because even though it is very generous, I also find it to be a little too heavy for my own personal taste, and I also think it's a little too big for my body frame. So I have tried it on, and I do think it's beautiful. It just doesn't necessarily work out for me or for my lifestyle, but it's all a matter of personal preference. So if you love it, absolutely go for it. But fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Andrea B. What do you think about the Chanel Coco handle? I know that you don't own one. Is there a reason why? I currently have a Chanel wallet on chain, which I love, and I'm saving to add another Chanel bag to my collection. I keep going back and forth between the classic flap and the Coco handle. Most likely, I will get the classic flap in the medium large, or maybe jumbo, and the Coco in the small. I just love the look of the top handle, and I also like to carry my bags on the crook of my arm. Before we get any further, let me insert a picture of the Chanel Coco handle in the size small right now. I think the Coco Handle is such a beautiful bag, and I did have it on my wish list for a hot second. I think that it offers so incredibly much. It brings a lot to the table. It's very versatile. It's comfortable. It's spacious. It's organized. It has feet. Um, I do believe that the newer ones might end up having the Lizard Handle. I could be wrong, and I'm not too fond of that texture, so that's one thing. Uh, but I did go to try it on a few times at the boutique, and um, every time I'd go to try it on, I didn't really end up meshing with the bag. It wasn't necessarily what I expected which makes no sense because like I said before, it has so many different pros. Uh, but when push came to shove, I just didn't really, um, I don't know, it just didn't end up meshing with me. And there is one thing um, that, when it comes to the quilted one, because I know that they also have the chevron detail one, with the quilts, um, they are a little bit puffier on the front. I really wish that it would have been a little bit more flush up against the um, up against the bag. That way, if you do end up carrying a little bit more, those guys won't end up kind of um, winging out, if you if you will. You know, they won't end up uh, having the, the corners end up lifting off of the bag. Uh, so I really wish it was a little bit more flush, but it is a beautiful, beautiful bag nonetheless. So if it speaks to you, absolutely end up going for it. And whether you go for the medium large or the jumbo, I think that those are both also fantastic bags. So great question, and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Lie to Me 101. I remember you had an Eva clutch. Did you sell yours and why? I'd love to know. I have the Eva and the Damia Ben, and I recently bought it pre loved in the monogram. Well, congratulations on your Evas. And so we have a little bit more eye candy. Let me insert a picture of this beautiful bag. I've always been a big fan of this beauty, whether it's the Monogram, the Damia Zor, or the Damia Ben, and uh, it's incredibly versatile, and it ends up fitting a lot more than people might think. And at one point in time, I did end up having the Damia Ben as well as the Monogram, and um, I sold them about three years ago, somewhere around there, and I don't regret it by any means whatsoever. Uh, but the reason why I sold them is because I started to notice that I, um, I didn't really gravitate towards them as much as I once did. You know, so I'd end up carrying them less and less to the point where I think I went months without e using either one of them. Um, I really did like using the Damia Ben one the most when we would travel because it's very carefree and it has an awesome length for the strap. Uh, but like I said before, I just wasn't reaching for them as much, but I still think it is a beautiful bag nonetheless. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from V, I'm just wondering what you think of the new Baguette Fendi collection. I'm kind of obsessed, but I don't see many reviews here. Before we get any further, let me insert a couple pictures of the newest baguettes right now. These bags have definitely grown on me. When I first saw them, I was like, I don't know, I don't know, but they have since grown on me, and I'm a huge huge fan of the Fendi Baguette, the original. I mean, that bag is iconic. It is classic. When it first came out in the early 90s, and of course, with Sex and the City, it just kind of blew up and it was everywhere. So I am a huge, huge fan of this bag. 
Some people are saying it's understated, other people are saying it's not understated because it has these giant Fs. Uh, but I do like the fact that this one has two different straps or two different ways that you can carry it. So it makes it a little bit more versatile. I think that the thicker strap will be um, very, very comfortable. I believe the website said that they're all made out of lambskin. Uh, for the most part, as far as the newest ones, they're made out of lambskin, but they have an all over FF motif that has a three dimensional texture to it. So like I said, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, are these patent leather? But when you see them up close, then you can really see uh, the softer leather. So I'm a big, big fan. I like that there's so many different colors to choose from. You have pink, white, teal, black. Um, I think I also saw yellow. I could be wrong. Maybe that was just in a dream. I have no idea. But um, I think that these bags are really, really fun. With the baguette, they've reintroduced it. They've revamped it. They've redesigned it a million times while still kind of um, having an ode to the original. And I feel like there's going to be a bag for for whatever your style is, whatever your taste is, I feel like there's a bag out there. There's a Fendi baguette with your name on it type of thing. I don't know, I could be wrong. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this bag. Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? Are you a fan of the classic, of the iconic, the original baguette? Whatever it is, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week and uh, my apologies if there are a million cuts on this video and also for the very long pauses while I'm trying to swallow because my throat is not cooperating today. Um, now I know that I wasn't able to uh, to get the videos out last week, last week that I wanted to, so I will try my hardest to get those out if everything goes to plan and if I can get this cold under control, I will try my hardest to have those out for you uh, at the end of the week. Uh, but regardless, um, I hope that I see you guys one more time at least. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.